St. Paul the Sixth Pope. The Lord chose him for himself as high priest, and opening his treasure house, made him rich in all good things. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. Welcome to this live stream mass for Friday of the seventh week of Easter and the feast of Pope St. Paul the Sixth. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves for these sacred. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who made St. Pope Paul VI the vicar of Peter and committed to him the care of the universal church, by his intercession keep your beloved flock ever safe, so that with integrity of faith and perfect charity, your church may journey to her heavenly homeland. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the Word of God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not a wrong practice to handle for an accused person before he had faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against them. Charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion, and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who called him was alive. Since I was the boss, I would investigate this controversy. I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpasses his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne. Established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength who do his bidding. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia. 
and with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself in what you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers, good morning. Our readings today, our readings today, are interesting because what they, the question that they ask us is when we love, what is the depth of our love? Now, what's interesting about the readings is that they apply to Paul, they apply to Peter, and they certainly apply also to um, our saint for today, Saint Pope Paul VI. But in a large sense, they apply to each and every one of us as well, because by virtue of our baptism, we all are anointed priest, prophet, and king. And so we all have this role uh, as a follower of Jesus Christ to love. And it becomes more than an emotional love. It becomes a love that involves our intellect, our will, as well as our hearts. So let's, let's spend a little time on this. We start with Paul, and Paul is in Caesarea, and Paul, remember, was a Roman citizen, and so he had the right always on the Roman court. Now, what's interesting in all of this is that his charges are coming from the Jewish community. They're not coming from the Roman officials, but as, as each one of the communities brought charges against, against Paul, he then appealed them. He appealed them to the Roman ruler in that area from Jerusalem, and it's going to be all the way to Rome, uh, where he ultimately dies. Uh, but there, there's something interesting embedded in these readings, um, and that is that even though he has people accusing him of things, and it's mainly accusing him of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for which he is a proponent and an advocate. The interesting thing is that by appealing um, their accusations all the way up to Rome, he probably extended his public ministry, okay, because he died in Rome, he was beheaded uh, in 62 AD, and his ministry started around 42 AD, so about 20 years. So by, if you will, milking the system for all of his worth, it extended his ministry. Why was that important? It was important because even when he left the community, he continued to send letters back to them. And his letters become the first glimpse, and the earliest glimpse, of Christology uh, within the Catholic Church, and in some sense, even of liturgy within the Catholic Church. And certainly, the elements of the early interpretations of the Gospels of Jesus Christ. So, by doing what he did, he extended his ministry, and that demonstrates for us the intensity of his love for the people that God put in his care after his conversion. And that's pretty cool, okay? And that's what makes him a saint, and that's what makes him a hero. Because he did exactly what Peter is talking about, what Jesus is saying to Peter in the gospel. 
to feed and to tend and to love his sheep. Something that's in, not only uh, asked of every priest, every bishop, every cardinal, every pope, but it's also asked of every follower of Jesus Christ. Because we're all evangelizers, whether and regardless of our vocation, whether we are married, whether we are single, whether we have a um, uh, religious vocation, the reality is we still are called as followers of Jesus Christ to love, to tend, um, and to feed the sheep of Jesus Christ. Okay? So that's, that's an interesting component uh, of this first reading. When we get to the gospel, um, and this is shortly before Jesus ascends into heaven, and what we see in a large sense is a moment of reconciliation of Peter with Jesus. Okay? And in some sense, it's like when we go to the sacrament of reconciliation. The priest is there in persona Christi, and the people come and they verbalize their sins to, to the priest in the, in, the, in the person of Jesus to seek God's forgiveness. Okay? Well, that's essentially what Jesus is doing with Peter. They are sitting down and they are having a conversation. Now it's an important conversation because on uh, Holy Thursday, early Good Friday morning, Peter denied Jesus three times. And so now Jesus gives Peter the opportunity to say that he loves him three times. Three is a number of perfection in our faith. Three is the number of persons in the Holy Trinity. Okay, and so he's giving him this opportunity to do this. But his choice of words are very important too, because in the Greek he moves from using the word agape to philia. So moving from what can oftentimes be called more of an emotional love to moving to the love of a brother, the love of, which is an emotional love brought together by a blood relationship, kin. And so he's drawing Peter closer to him as he basically gives Peter the chance to atone for his offense against him, but also even more importantly, for Jesus to show his love for him. But there's something else embedded in all of this, and that is that Jesus still says, my sheep, they're not Peter's sheep, even though he's gonna be the first leader of the Catholic Church. They are not the Pope's sheep, they are not the Cardinal's, Sheep. They are not the archbishop's sheep. They are not the bishop's sheep. They are not my sheep. They are sheep belonging to Jesus, entrusted to our care. Your children are sheep um, that are that belong to Jesus, that are entrusted to your care. Your spouse is a sheep that belongs to Jesus, entrusted to your care. So we always have to remember that because we all come from God. We are all beloved children of God, whether we acknowledge it or not. And therefore, we belong to Him, whether we acknowledge it or not. And so this becomes a very important definition of relationship. Uh, and so this, this gospel becomes very important. And then, of course, what does He do? He gives him um, a, a, a vision of what that love is going to mean to him. And that is, of course, that he will be bound and he will die as Jesus died crucified. And in spite of the bodaciousness of Peter before Jesus' ascension to heaven, when Peter, when, when Peter became the rock upon whom the church was built and led the church, he exhibited the same humility and obedience of Jesus Christ to the extent that when, when he learned he was going to be crucified, he said, crucify me upside down because I'm not worthy to be there crucified as my Savior was crucified. So that was an enormous humility for him. Now, so again, we see this beautiful parallel. Well, we see it also in the life of Pope St. Paul VI. And uh, as you can see by the new banners outside the cathedral, um, when he was Monsignor Giovanni Baptista, the Secretary of State for um, the Vatican, he was here in Denver in 1941. And actually, he was here again in Denver in 1952. And so we have the presence of yet another saint here in, uh, in Denver to help sanctify what we do. But he too led a very interesting life because he understood that the wake of Vatican II, what it was to 
long into ten and feed sheep. And he ended up doing it at an enormous cost to himself. And what was that cost? When he issued the encyclical, the Man of Vite, uh, it was so controversial at the time, even though it was embedded in so many teachings of the church through so many of his predecessors as pontiffs, he, he received such a backlash, even within the church, that he said he would never write another encyclical again. And he didn't. But it didn't stop him from doing what his charge was to love and to tend and feed his sheep with the gospel of Jesus Christ with the respect for life that continues in our church today, in spite of its controversy in the popular culture. Uh, I have the great blessing, as you can see in this picture here, to have been presented to then Pope Paul VI in 1973 um, in, in the, in the uh, audience hall. It's now named after the Pope Paul VI audience hall. And um, it was beautiful. There was a graciousness there. There was a kindness there. There was a warmth. It was a shepherd. And he was a shepherd with a beautiful heart. And again, what's important is that what we see in each one of these cases, Peter and Paul and Paul VI, is that they had an intensity of love that guided their ministries. But they all each carried an enormous cross, literally or figuratively, in carrying out that role. And yet, it becomes, they become models for us because they show us that no matter what the popular culture says, no matter what the popular belief is, that if we pick up our cross and follow Jesus, whether it's emotional, spiritual, psychological, physical, or even financial, He'll give us the grace to endure that cross. But even more importantly, in carrying that cross in humility and obedience to that call to love and to feed and to tend, we too can become saints. May God bless you. Please stand. Heavenly Father, we offer you all our prayers and our petitions as we pray for the Church as the body of Christ here on earth. May the Lord grant us patience for one another, bearing with one another in love with humble and gentle hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for world, national, and local leaders. May the God who gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning grant them just and prudent decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are persecuted for their faith in Christ, may the hope of the resurrection fill them with courage and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here, may the grace of God mold and strengthen us in our lives of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died are the Messiah of faith. May they come to share in the glory of the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray our own intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For refugees and for immigrants, we pray to the Lord. And for those who are part of the Pope Francis plenary indulgence, those who have been called home by the coronavirus, there are those who mourn their loss and may not have been able to be with them. The doctors, the nurses, the scientists, the researchers, the first responders, the military, the caregivers, and the federal, state, and local government emergency response coordinators. For those who are, uh, those who serve uh, at the shelters, for those who serve at the, at the soup and sandwich lines, for those who serve in pantries, for those who donate, funds and, and foods for those services and for those who are praying these ministries forward. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. For, those, for all of those who have been affected by the violence in Minneapolis and around the world, for all of them, we pray to the Lord. 
and for, uh, we remember in a special way, the sick of our cathedral and St. Elizabeth communities. Nancy Clark, Bill Johns, Buford Brown, Peter Chavez, Ellen Trujillo, Dustin Clark, Roger Romani, Father Jude Guyweber, and Cheryl Ventura, and Marcy Williams. And for St. Elizabeth, Nancy Fox, Ian Steve Perez, and Loretta Bullo. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, and remember in a special way, first of all, Mike Farley and Josie of St. Elizabeth, and Tina Martinez of the Cathedral, who um, will be laid to rest today. All three of these people were called home by the coronavirus. We also remember other friends of our community who have died. Lou J.D., Jesse Mangers, Carol O'Connor, Joe Vitale, Deacon Anthony Dunsick, um, Billy Bruce, and Kathleen Hayes. And for the repose of all of their souls, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we offer you all our prayers and petitions to act upon according to your providential will. We offer all of them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare our gifts and prepare the altar. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities, and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord be so blessed by the sacrifice, for the grace of the Lord is to him, for our good and our good and our good. Grant our supplication, we pray, O Lord, that this sacrifice we present on the feast day of St. Pope Paul VI may be for our good, since through his offering you have loosened the offenses of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord and Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, we will come with castle joy. Every land, every people exalts in praise, and even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the end in him of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created by the gifts of praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the King of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice will be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit that graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the wish of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance of your life, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Pope St. Paul VI and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Samuel our Bishop and Jorge as assistant bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind of witness to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The spiritual communion prayer for servant of God, Raphael Mary Hamal. At thy feet, O my Jesus, I prostrate myself and I offer thee repentance of my contrite heart, which is humbled in its nothingness and in thy holy presence. I adore thee in the sacrament of thy love, the ineffable Eucharist. I desire to receive thee into the poor dwelling that my heart offers thee. While waiting for the happiness of sacramental communion, I wish to possess thee in spirit. Come to me, O my Jesus, since I for my part am coming to thee. May thy love embrace my whole being in life and in death. I believe in thee, I hope in thee, I love thee. Amen. My sisters and brothers, for those of you who are with us, please, at the, at the conclusion of Mass, um, John will distribute Holy Communion. Please come one at a time, receive Holy Communion, and then go back to your seat. For those of you that are watching this on live stream, please come and join us for Holy Communion at the conclusion of Mass. Um, you may come down and park in the Mary lot, come through the Mary Garden, and come here into the cathedral to receive Holy Communion. And um, uh, Jesus will be available until 8 15. So thank you. Please stand. Let us pray. May the power of the gifts we have received, Lord God, on this feast day of Pope St. Paul VI, fill us with its effects both to sustain our own life and to gain us the joy of our daily happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, my sisters and brothers, just a couple of things. First of all, I want to thank all of you that are providing the meats and the cheeses and the breads for our breakfast sandwich line here at the cathedral and to the restaurants and individuals that are providing the food for the soup and sandwich to go line at St. Elizabeth. Uh, tomorrow will be sandwich making here at the cathedral. And so if you have any meats or breads or cheeses for us for sandwich making tomorrow, if you can give them uh, to the church or to the office today, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, we've been very fortunate. We've had to buy very little food right now for uh, the sandwich line, we greatly, we greatly appreciate that. We also want to thank all of you that are continuing your offertory contributions here at the cathedral. I know that some of you can't because of these economic times, and that's okay, don't worry about it. But for those of you that can't, if you can get your envelopes here to the church or to the office, or go online and to donate uh, online, either for the cathedral or for St. Elizabeth, we greatly appreciate that. 
through the cathedral, uh, through Easter, we were running about $38,000 below in offertory, some of us went over $8,000 in offertory, right now it's running about 50% normal. So anything you can do to help us, we greatly appreciate it. It helps to support our outreach ministry and our online ministry. I remind you that our online ministry includes uh, the Daily Mass going up on our YouTube channel and Facebook by right mid-morning. You can pray the Spiritual Communion at 10, the Angelus at 12, the Divine Mercy Chapel at 3, the Immaculate Conception of Mina at 6 o'clock. And during the month of May, we also have the Scriptural Mysteries of the Rosary uh, online so that you can pray those because the month is <coughs> May, May is the month of Mary and the Rosary. And finally, I want to invite you to join me and my parents before me, actually, uh, in supporting the annual Archbishop's Catholic Appeal. The Archbishop's Catholic Appeal um, touched my family's life in the late 1990s when my dad was unable to go to Mass, and we benefited from the uh, TV broadcast uh, ministry. Uh, it helped underwrite my time in seminary. And here at the Cathedral, the, the ACA provides $300,000 toward our annual million dollar a year deficit. But this year especially, there are a lot of parishes in the Archdiocese that are in need. And so the first million dollars that's being collected is being made available to those parishes that are in a financial crisis, those pastors who are tr having trouble feeding and tending and loving their sheep uh, because of financial concerns. So anything you can do to participate will benefit those most in need in these uh, uncertain times. So thank you for being with us today at the Cathedral Basilica. Thank you for your love of our Blessed Mother. And most importantly, think about the depth of your love in your life and how you reflect it in your vocation. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.